Okay, for 4B, another one where we want to find all this information. We're going to start out by drawing the triangle. This one uh, tells us exactly what quadrant it's going to be in. Uh, so we don't have to use the all students take calculus like we did for the previous one. Uh, it tells us what quadrant. We're in quadrant number three uh, based on this. So we're going to draw the triangle in quadrant number three. And we're going to use the definition for tangent. That definition is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side would be five. So it's opposite this angle here measured from the x-axis. Uh, so this would be five opposite over adjacent. Now you gotta be really careful that you get the correct signs when you put this in. Because you're in the uh, third quadrant, both of these need to be negative. That's very important to remember that because if you don't get the signs correct, then these other ones are not gonna be correct either. So it's very important to determine the correct signs. So don't just draw a regular triangle without a quadrant. Get in the habit of drawing it in a quadrant like this because if you just draw a regular triangle, then you make it all positive, you're not going to get the correct answer. So you don't want to get points taken off because of minus signs. Okay, so we have it drawn down here. We have our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this case, the c is going to be the unknown. So we have negative 5 squared and negative 12 squared. We get uh, 25 plus 144 equals c squared and you get 169 is your c squared. Square root of both sides, you'll get 13. The hypotenuse is always going to be positive regardless of what quadrant you're in. So even though we do get plus or minus here, we're choosing the, to make that positive. Now we have the triangle complete. We're ready to fill in these, the first five here. All right, so for sine, that's opposite over hypotenuse. That would be negative 5 thirteenths. And then the cosecant would be negative 13 over 5. So thank goodness this one doesn't have any radicals to deal with. It'll, it makes the problem a lot easier without the radicals. So we have negative 5 thirteenths, negative 13 fifths. Uh, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 12 thirteenths. And your secant is negative 13 over 12. Your cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of the original one, 12 over 5. So for all this, we have, we filled out the first five, uh, which are just, just regular fractions. And now we're ready to fill out the rest of this information here with the double angles and half angles. So now we have this, we can erase this. Now we're ready to do the, use the formulas. So we want to do sine two theta. Sine two theta is equal to two sine theta, cosine theta, that's our formula. We're going to put in our values for sine and cosine into this formula here. We're going to do 2 times negative 5 thirteenths and then times negative 12 thirteenths. So we just put in our answers that we got for sine and cosine and that's going to be 2 over 1. You get the answer by multiplying across the top, across the bottom. If you multiply across the top, you're going to get a positive 120 and the bottom 169. So this would be 120 over 169. That's the answer there for sine 2 theta. Next, we want to do cosine 2 theta. And as I mentioned in the previous problem, there's three different formulas that you can use for cosine 2 theta. I'm just going to use this one. Uh, so 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So now that I have uh, this again, you can use any of the three formulas, but I'm just choosing that one in particular. We'll put in our value for cosine, which is negative 12 thirteenths. So we're going to do 2 times negative 12 thirteenths. Don't forget the square, because there's a square in that formula. And then now we're just going to uh, work that one out. Uh, you can put that into a calculator if you do it uh, step by step here. If you square the top and bottom, the negative goes away and you get this. And so if we uh, complete that, 2 times 144, and we subtract 169 over 169, the final answer that you're going to get here is 119 over 169. So that's our answer we'll put here, 119 over 169 for cosine 2 theta. Next, we want to do tangent 2 theta. 
Uh, in tangent to theta, you can either use the formula that I gave in the lecture notes, or instead we can just simply divide, take sine 2 theta divided by cosine 2 theta, and you can get the answer that way. So that's the one I'm going to use. Tangent 2 theta here would be equal to sine 2 theta over cosine 2 theta. So we can just put in our two fractions for that. It's going to be 120 over 169. And on the bottom, we have 119 over 169. And we, we, if we flip and multiply, uh, we'll basically get the 169s to cancel out, and you'll get 120 over 119 as your answer. That would be the answer for tangent 2 theta. The last two that we're going to do is the half angle formulas. Now, like before, if you do half angles, you have to first determine which quadrant this is in. Uh, so we have, this is the original statement they gave us, 180 to 270. We want to find the right quadrant where theta over 2 is in. So you always take this statement and we're going to divide each of those by 2. And this will give you 135 theta over 2 and then, uh, or 190 I should say. So this is 90 here and then 135 over there. Okay, so you're between 90 and 135. Now between 90 and 135, that is going to be in the second quadrant. So now you want to think about whether on this one, actually this problem was originally written as a cosine, not sine. So this is cosine here. Uh, so they want us to do, on this problem, they want us to do cosine theta over 2. So now you want to think about which quadrant uh, theta over 2, uh, the, you're in the second quadrant, whether the cosine, which is what they originally asked, is positive or negative. In this case, Cosine theta over 2 is negative in quad 2. Okay, so cosine is negative there. So because it is, the formula we have for cosine theta over 2 is the one that involves the plus or minus on it. So that one, uh, you want to use the one that has a negative sign. So because we determined that that's negative in the second quadrant, that means that we're going to use this formula here. Negative square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2. So it's 1 plus cosine, but instead of plus or minus, we're going to purposely put a negative sign out front. And now we're just putting the value for cosine, which is negative 12 thirteenths. So we're going to get uh, on this one, right over here, we're going to get negative square root 1 plus negative 12 thirteenths over 2. We just want to get some common denominators there. We're going to multiply the 1 by 13 over 13. We get negative square root of, uh, you'll get, when you subtract those, 13 thirteenths minus 12 thirteenths will give you 1 thirteenth, and that's over the 2 on the bottom. Then we want to flip and multiply, and when we flip and multiply, we'll get negative 1 over, uh, negative square root 1 over 26. And that's an exact value. Don't, don't worry about rationalizing that. You can leave it in uh, that form. The last thing we're going to do is tangent theta over 2. I'll use the same formula I used previously, uh, which is this one here. You put the value in for sine and cosine, these two right here. So we're going to get sine value is negative 5 thirteenths over 1 plus negative 12 thirteenths. And we're just going to simplify that. So we have negative 5 thirteenths on top. On the bottom, you're going to combine that together, common denominators. 13 thirteenths minus 12 thirteenths, again, like the last problem was 1 thirteenth. Now if you flip and multiply, you're going to get negative 5 for the last one. The 13s will cancel out and you just get negative 5 over 1 as your answer. So again, exact values means you need to put in uh, fractions for your answer.